guys welcome back to the channel if you're new here i'm anna and i'm a little bit spooky and today we're doing something a little different we're getting a little adventurous and going in with a murky almost dusty denim blue on the lid because i really wanted to use this shade i wanted to uh get a little bit of those love witch vibes going and create kind of a 70s retro feeling look for this look we used the rebel rouge labs prelude to agony palette because i also just want to use this palette again because i loved it this is the typo negative themed palette from rebel rouge labs and this was their valentine's day launch and i wanted to use these shades right here these two kind of murky blue dusty blue shades so bad they're very kind of unique and actually really unique to my collection so i wanted to find a way to make them work and use them on my eyeballs and see how it would look so yeah we tied it in with some peachy blush and a peachy lip i think it came out perfectly and i love it i'm very very surprised because girl when i sat down here to film i did not think or know if this was gonna work so if you want to see how i got the look and how i kind of got everything to work out for me and look how i wanted to look all that jazz just go ahead and keep on watching but before you do don't forget to like subscribe comment down below let me know some more videos that you would like to see and don't forget to follow me over on Instagram. I will have it linked below as well where you're trying to grow the Instagram. That for the do, let's go ahead and get into this 70s love witch goodness. We're attempting something a little different today. Gonna need all the coffee in the world. <laughs> I'm uh, gonna branch out and try something a little bit out of my comfort zone as far as shade goes. I don't do blue very often, especially kind of a grayish blue. It's a little different for me. But anyways, we'll be reaching into the Rebel Road... Rebel Rouge Labs Prelude to Agony palettes, and we're gonna use the shade called Morning and Laurel. For sure, these are gonna be the shades we're gonna reach into, which are these two kind of murky, dusty, weird blue tones right up here. And I think we're gonna take a little bit of Sulpicur and use that in the uh, crease a little bit, maybe to ground the look. And I think I'm gonna do kind of a simple look with these and just a little bit love witch-esque i have a plan will would be able to execute it i don't know and will it turn out good i don't know but we're gonna give it a try because this the laurel shade really just intrigues me and the morning shade is really interesting it's a matte and then laurel is a metallic kind of a little bit more richer version of the matte a little bit deeper rather i've already primed my lids and set them down some translucent powder all the products i use will be of course linked down below but to prime, I use the um, Sigma eyeshadow base and a little bit of translucent powder. I'm trying to pan the powder. I'm trying to use up the KVD Locket powder. Look, I've almost, almost got it used up. This will be the second powder I fully used up if I use this one. I think I'm just going to start the look out using Sepulchre. Sep Sepulchre. 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 <laughs> I have a hard time saying that word. I don't know why, it just makes me go derp. So we're gonna use that shade I'll put on the screen, which is a tomb or like a burial place that's carved into like a cave or something out of stone. I did Google it to uh, try to look up the pronunciation to make sure I was saying it correctly and I just can't get the word out. I'm like, okay, I, I got, I understand the word. I understand how to say it. It's just getting my mouth and tongue to say it is another story because I get tongue-tied really easy. Like, I have a bit of a lift sometimes, maybe. I don't know. But I have a hard time sometimes saying certain words and getting them out properly. It just doesn't doesn't seem to happen. Jump right into this taupey brown. We'll use that as our contour today, too, because it is a lovely contour shade. I'm going to take this on a fluffy brush. This is a Sony Cash kind of rounded crease blending brush. And I'm just going to use the mirror here in this palette because it's a great mirror. So you can't bring that right in here for some depth just get a little definition going this is a lovely shade really for just purely for like giving depth and contouring the eye i really like it for that it is neutral veering on cool like it's not the coolest taupe out there but it's just truly a taupe shade it builds nicely as well i'm just gonna use that right in here if you can hear like some rumbling from the other room that is resident evil <laughs> that you're hearing you probably don't hear it if you got like headphones on. There's a gnat in here or a little flying bug. Um, where you live, do you have issues with gnats? Like um, little annoying gnats that sting and bite you? I guess they bite, they don't really sting. Does anyone else have, have issues with that in their area? That's so bad. Like not every year in Louisiana, but some years it's just like insane. And it's, ugh, they're horrible and you get eat up with them. I think 
they're gonna be bad this year because we've had such a damp year. And uh, yeah, I'm allergic to them. So when they bite me, it makes basically a burn mark and it's so fun. It blisters up, it makes a full on burn and it takes forever for them to heal. I got bit by one right here, my wrist. Outside for like two minutes, looking at my friend's koi pond and yep, one got me right there and it immediately makes like a whelp and bubble and blister and then it looks like a burn and it takes so long for it to heal over and it just itches and hurts and burns. It's just, ugh, it's awful. Okay, let's take a little bit of morning, which is the matte kind of powdery blue, but like a dusty murky powdery blue. It's a very odd shade. It's not vibrant. I think I'm gonna start that on the lid. Like it almost, you know, it kind of translates as a white type of gray on the eye, in fact. Pretty neat color. I'm gonna let that flow into a sepulcher. Sepulcher. I did it. I did it. I said it. <laughs> Why is that word so hard? Let me know down below if there's like a word like that that just tongue ties you so bad. There's a few of them that do that to me. I'm just like a dirt over them. It's like they know how to read the word. <laughs> it's just just saying the word. It's a whole other story. Yeah, that, that actually translates more like a gray on the lid. But it definitely has a strong kind of blue undertone to it. You know, this is actually kind of a nice look right here. Just something very simple. Pretty. Pretty. It's nice finding the versatility in a palette that is unexpected because once you put them on the eyes, you kind of can realize something a little different about them. And I'm not packing this on. I'm just doing a dusting over it. I'm going to take it on this fluffy end of a Sigma brush. Okay. Let it run right out here above our brown. It's kind of neat. Very soft. It just softens those edges out and creates a really unique flow. All right. Let's take Laurel now on that brush and start to pack that onto the lid now. Oh, that's, that's interesting. That's so interesting. It has such a odd undertone to it. Like it's, I don't want to say like murky, but there's something like washed out about it in a really interesting, very retro vintage way. Like it reminds me of something you would see in a, a shade you would see used in like a 70s living room. <laughs> that's what makes it kind of cool. I like odd shades like this. I don't think I've ever seen this color quite like this on a palette where it has that little bit of green, a little bit of a dustiness to it. And it's definitely not a shade I would uh, think to use or be gra or gravitate towards, even if it was. Let's see what we can do with it. And do you know? I kind of dig it. I mean, that's what I was going for, something kind of simple, very... Think of um, the actress in The Love Witch, her eyeshadow. That kind of look, but just a little more me. I'm just gonna let that flow up as well. It will kind of blend out and give it a bit of a wink shape. All right, cool. Take a little bit more of our brown, sculpt out the transition a bit, and right out here. Well, I think we did something. And that's basically what I set out to do is to create a look like this. It's just something so kind of really outside my comfort zone to use these shades or this type of shade. And I wanted to do it. And I wanted to create an interesting look. Go back a little bit more of a morning right out here just to blend. I don't want to describe this shade as chalky because it has kind of a negative sound to it, but if you could maybe use that to describe it in the best way, because it's not chalky in texture, it's just a truly like kind of a very pale blue, murky blue. All right, that's pretty neat. Go ahead and kind of sort out what I want to do for liner, and then I'll do the other eye. I feel like maybe a, a gray liner, like a dark gray liner will be the way to go. Yeah, I'm going to use this tart one called Slate. It's just a really deep blue gray. I don't know, I just feel like that would complement. would not be too harsh against eyeshadow color because I don't want to compete with it too much, but I'm just going to use this to tie a line right up here in the lashes. Maybe just do a little bit right here on this outer corner, coming up from that lower lash line. Just a little baby wink. I'm not gonna line the fully across the upper lash line. Little angled brush, if I can find one. 110 angled brushes and I never can find one. Just soften that out a bit. Now just a little bit of depth right just there. Put my finger, that blue shade, just intensify right here. That's fun, I dig it. All right, I'm gonna do the other eye and probably put some mascara and a little half lash on way back to finish things up. Wow, that was fast, I know. Right, and we are back. I just went ahead and did my foundation and concealer and some setting powder and popped on some lashes, touched up the brows, the huge. So um, I think I'm gonna keep the lower lash line pretty clean. I don't wanna overwhelm the look. So what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of that brown shade that we used a while ago in the transition, that taupey brown. And we're just gonna run that right close under here for a bit of definition. I also kind of pull my liner into the inner corner a bit. Give that 
little more of a cat eye shape going and half lashes that lift the outer corner and all the products i used otherwise that you didn't see will be linked down below and listed and linked all that uh, if it's an amazon link it is an affiliate link otherwise it is just a plain old link all right i'm just gonna take the clean blending brush here i'm gonna blend those edges out Let's take this as a little bit of a contour. Use this nice little floppy one from e.l.f. This is technically a highlighting brush. Just gonna dip dab a little on the tip. Gonna bring that through the hollow. I did a little bit of a cream contour, but not much. That really is a great contour shade. Double Rouge should sell that by itself as a contour. Look at there. That's so nice. Oh, their new palette. The one, ugh. It's like a Lana Del Rey inspired. Oh, or Lana Del Rey. Ooh, I want it. I want it so bad. It's on my list. But it's very like Marie Antoinette, Lana Del Rey, Gucci ad with Geraletto vibes. Uh, I'm, I'm in love with it. I think it's so beautiful. Okay, so things are looking pretty cool on the face. A little, maybe veering on washed out. So what we do to warm things up a bit is going with some bronzer. I'm going to take my City bronzer from Maybelline. This guy right here. You know I love him. And on my blon bl bronzer, bronzer brush, I'm going to take a little bit of that off the excess. A lot picks up with this bronzer. It's very powdery. So you do have to tap your brush off. You will get a bit too much product. It's a bit across that forehead. A little egg head. No, I don't really have an egg head. I have a cone head. <laughs> and with my bronzer, I am going to take a little bit on a fluffy brush. I'm just going to run it right out here. Just get a little bit of warmth. Oh god. Picked up too much. Went a little too harshly. A little too rough my brush powder one everywhere and for highlighter i'm gonna go into my elf highlighter in white gold i think that would look good with this uh, i thought about the jaclyn hill and sparks but i think that's gonna be a little too greeny with this it's a little too yellow and i don't, I don't know i don't think that'll look good i'm gonna take this on the inner corner brighten things up a bit and just dust a little bit here on the brow all right nice and glowy Cool. Now I feel like what would really kind of finish this look is of course some mascara, but uh, some peachy blush. I feel like we need peachy blush. So I'm going to go with Always Cheeky from e.l.f. This is one of the primer and fused blushes and these are some of the best blushes at the drugstore and one of e.l.f.'s best products honestly. These blushes are incredible. Again, super pigmented so you want to kind of light hand, but I feel like this kind of peachy blush will just liven this look up and won't look undead. Suddenly we look a little bit more alive. Now let's do a little mascara. I think I'm going to use my Sky High just because it's right in front of me here on the upper and lower lashes. And my half lashes are from son of a bitch. <laughs> I just right on there. Okay so we're gonna let that chill but my my lashes are from Shop Miss A. They're the AOA Studio Alexis lashes and i've cut them down to about a quarter of their size because they're massive and i got little shrimp eyes and i didn't realize they were gonna be that big but boy they were they're huge but they're lovely lashes otherwise they're just real big and i do like a quarter lash personally kind of a half lash situation it's just my preferred way to do falsies right now it just suits me better easy too it's like the easiest possible way you could do lashes <laughs> Now, let's see if we can get that off without destroying my face. I'm gonna let it dry down a bit, so hopefully we can get it. But yeah, if you get mascara on your face, don't panic. Let it dry. Take a Q-tip and just spin it directly on top. Like this. Don't wipe or smudge it around. Gently twist it right over top of that mascara. And it's gone. I just have a little spot I need to repair now with a bit of... I'll just tap over with my sponge and hopefully we fix it. Yeah, good enough. All right, I'm going to do some setting spray. I'm going to use my e.l.f. Micro Fine Setting Mist Day All Night. And for lips, I'm going to use the Jason Wu Lips Hot Fluff Lipstick. It, this is pretty close to almost exactly the shade. Oh, that's not Hot Fluff. This, or this is not the right shade. That's cannoli. 
We're gonna use the shade Eclair from Jason Wu and the Hot Fluff lipsticks. These can double as a blush, but I already kind of powdered my cheeks and yeah. But it's basically the same color as the Always Cheeky, maybe just a little bit pinker, just a t I mean, just a tad, tad, tad bit. But I mean, this is such a beautiful lipstick and I think Peach would really kind of set the eyes off and look nice. You know, it would probably look really pretty to have a little more peach in the transition. So I might take a little bit of the blush and run it through there and just kind of tie it in a little better. I feel like that would look pretty. I like the way it looks like this too. I <laughs> just, my, my habit of wanting to go towards something warm, always, always there. And for lip liner, I'm going to use Max Spice. Let me get that lined. But these Jason Wood lipsticks have the most beautiful, like, kind of powdery finish to them. They're very velvety. Yeah, that's the color I wanted. Perfect. Very bright and kind of peachy. Cannoli is a little bit more brown. I love cannoli too, though. It's even warmer, a little bit deeper. I just love the versatility of them. That you can use them as blush, and they just have such beautiful tones. I am going to pull a little bit of blush through the transition just to kind of, I don't know, I feel like it would just tie in a little bit better if I did. So I'm going to take my fluffy brush again, a little bit of Always Cheeky. You can't really see it too much, but just warmed it up ever so slightly, made it blend in. Yeah, that definitely helps. It just keeps you from looking quite so abrupt. I just feel like if we were looking a little abrupt right there in the transition and not quite flowing into my skin. Are we done? I think we're done with this look. Holy crap. This was really easy and I was not expecting it, expecting it to come out this good. I was really real apprehensive about it because like, oh, these are not colors that I work with. I don't do blue very often, especially this tone of blue. It's very weird for me, but I like it. I thought it looked really pretty with peach and I've been kind of contemplating a look similar to this just because every time I see a picture or a clip from the Love Witch, I'm like, oh, I want to do makeup like that. Be a 70s goddess, but yeah. So You know what? Let's do it. So I even made my hair kind of flip out and have some 70s vibes. All right, I think we are done with today's look. What do you guys think? I like it. I think it turned out pretty nice. I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, don't feel like I'd be self-conscious to wear this out. <laughs> so that's a good thing. And yeah, I think that is a surprisingly beautiful color on, um, on my lids, even though it's a color that I instinctively would not think would look good on me or one that I would go for. But somehow it's working and I definitely think adding the peach to the transition helped and kind of keep everything very cohesive throughout the face. Because that's usually the trick if you're using a shade that is something either maybe intimidating for you or a shade that you're just, you know, isn't going to necessarily flatter your undertones or be a little more outside the box. Going in with um, shades that are kind of native to your skin tone and your face in conjunction, like within the transition and the crease help ground that look and help ground that other eyeshadow shade so it doesn't look so abrupt and it just kind of flows into your skin tone and works. And of course like incorporating like your blush tone in and just making it, just making things cohesive throughout the entire face and tying it all together really does help and you can basically put any color you want on your lid and it'll work. It's just kind of a foolproof way of doing that. So yeah, anyways, thanks for hanging out with me today and seeing how I got this kind of simple, quick, easy, fun look, branching out, doing something new. So yeah, I will um, see you guys in the next one. Stay safe and stay spooky. Bye now.